Uh, just some different VHF and UHF antennas. And uh, probably everybody, unless you're really new, has indeed made one of these. Pretty much a standard J pole antenna. It might be considered a W8 SGR protocol. Um, probably made right here, I don't honestly remember. But uh, pretty much indestructible. The thing that I don't really care for about this antenna is, um, well, one, when copper was nearly free, you could build one of these for almost nothing. <laughs> Copper's not free anymore, so you know you're looking at 30 bucks, which is not nothing. It is indestructible, um, save this connector, and the way it's soldered on here is actually a little tricky. So now they're about 30 bucks, and the weak part is this connector assembly, and then secondly, it's lousy at, at uh, 440. It'll work, but it's not good. It's better than nothing, but not real good. And I'll send it around if you guys want to just take a peek at it again. Um, and I think it's a great place to start. I think maybe every ham should build one of those to start with. And um, and I don't really have a problem with the J-Pole antenna. Now this was, this is the deluxe J-Pole antenna with a very expensive reflector that's supposed to make it better for 440. And I added quick breakdown. Yeah, that's so, okay. Uh, and painted. Yeah, that was still powerful. Yep, so copper. Essentially the same thing, just this reflector to make it a little more efficient on 440. Don't know if that's true or not, but Chuck said it's it was. It's a dual bander. Yep. So did you try it with a meter and see what the SWR? Yes. Yep. See, now that's that's a two meter there. Yes. Yep. So this is, but it's still a quarter wave on 440. There is mine. Is that a full wave on VHF? That one I believe, oh, I don't remember. No, it can't no, be. I mean, just looking at it, it can't be, but it's probably yes. halfway. So this is all one conductor? There's no separation here anywhere? No? Right. I'm not I'm much into the out. theory on how... The part of it works. that's in your right hand is, Sorry, is uh, not doesn't, doesn't participate in any way. It's, it's just there to hold it up. Right. Oh, because like a dipole are electronically separate. That's what I don't understand either is why how, they, how it works. It's, a, it's AC and not DC. Totally different. It's like a loop antenna. Have you ever seen a loop antenna? It's it's a loop. It should be shorted. It, if you if you ever dealt with DC current, it shouldn't work at all. But it resonant. works great. The resonant. It's resonant. resonant. So uh, interesting. All the current. Interestingly leaves. enough, this was a, a recurring topic at our general um, classes that we had over the last few weeks on Wednesday nights. And... Um, one of the things that we had discussed was how AC works opposed to DC with different impedances, LC networks, and uh, that is a DC short. However, that vibrates on AC. That's how you get a signal out of it. So, vibrates. It brings up a worthwhile thing to Resonance. remember and consider. The, the, the um, whenever you build an antenna, any antenna, before you use it, you need to put it on an SWR meter. And that's hard for new hams because they don't usually have them. Joe and they just beat his back so I couldn't do that. Before. Usually you can swindle KJ or KFJ or the club into testing it. Particularly important for a mobile antenna on your car because those are particularly bad and you will burn your stuff up. Um, you know, if you SWR is serious, so I would I have never transmitted on an antenna ever without checking the SWR on it first. And I, then I've met hams that have been hams for like four years and they're like, a oh, what? Um, so <laughs> I would, it's not that hard to coordinate to get somebody to test it. It's an easy machine and there may be a minor adjustment that's needed. So please consider that. Okay, so again, one of these has the weak point here at the connector. It's a downright lousy 440, but better than nothing. And we're still looking at 30 bucks. What this is, is um, this is PVC pipe, but it's air compressor grade, so it's thin wall. And um, I'll send this around. That is a fully assembled, what I call an Ed Fong antenna. Okay, and Ed Fong is a professor from Berkeley University in California, who many years ago came up with this funky antenna design that's made to go inside a piece of PVC pipe like that. That's what this was. And it does really good on two meter and really good on 440. And, um, and same, they're- Same antenna. 30 bucks. 
Same antenna. Same antenna. As that's in there. Yeah. That's what shipping 30 bucks, right? Yeah. 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 20, say 20, 20 something. 28, I think. 28 some change or and, whatever. And doesn't the money go to his students or something at exactly. the university or something? The University of, uh, of Berkeley, California, here I'll send a little bit of documentation around. It's tuned. It's nothing complicated. Chuck was talking about bootlegging them. Hey, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but it's a nice little antenna. And more importantly, we did some tests. We, um, we tested these two plus that, a tram um, knockoff of an X300 diamond, and then I think we had an X50, and I think we might have had one other better antenna, I don't remember for sure. But we did it in my house, again, about 30 feet up, and we had a couple guys in Benzie County, Paul in Traverse City, um, like Norm. And we just did signal reports on Simplex. And um, the, the J-Pole did the worst, but not that bad. But the Ed Fawn there for 30 bucks out the door blew its doors off to one and a half to two S meters better, which was a hell of a lot for this test, um, both ways. Now the, the tram was similar and the diamond did a little better, but by a little, I mean less than one S bar. So um, you do get something for, you know, I could extrapolate from that that an X300 or an X600 or what have you that you paid 250 bucks for, yeah, it's probably going to do a little better. Um, but the bang for the buck on that guy is unbeatable. And there's nothing to it. It is important to use that thin wall PVC, which is dirt cheap. It's like $2.50 for a six foot piece. And I just split it with a coupler so I have a place to clamp it. Um, if you go to clamp it, to a, to a pole, it's nice to have you know two clamps, and I wanted a spacer. And the next one I build, I'm going to put Schedule 40 in here. So when you order it, you just get this part. Yeah, that's okay. what comes in the mail. Okay. And anybody who wants that can have it for just twenty-eight dollars, or I'll take thirty bucks too. Just chalk change is fine. Like it's a it's a trade it's some kind here. Uh -huh. um, there is a whole write. He did a whole write up in QST magazine when? that I kind of two thousand and seven. Oh. Yeah. Long, yeah, and it's worth researching, and then you can understand it better. So this looks like it's a, it's a coil, but it's, it must be a capacitive matching for this stuff or something. Yeah, I wish I could understand it. That's probably why it works on 440. And it does a really sweet job on 440 because there's not that much difference on two meter, but 440, holy crap! The J Pole did bad on 440, um, whereas this guy does really good. And again, and it's a little bit less stability than that. So depending on how you feel about that. So anyway, this did better than the J-Pole with the, uh, yeah, the shroud on it. Yeah. There, sadly, there was not much improvement to my far more expensive. And that was not easy to solder on there, for the record. Putting that cone on there, not easy. Um, not a bad experiment, you know, part of the process. But um, so that's sort of what the, what we came up with. The results of our test were pretty much for everybody that participated. Is wow, Ed Fong did darn good for the money. And unless you wanted to spend the big bucks for a nice diamond, um, it's not worth it. So hence, uh, and I built a couple for a service band, uh, you know, for like police and fire, um, and they work fine for that. And all in all, I've been really pleased with the antenna. Like I said, the only difference that I'm going to do on the next one is I'll put a chunk of Schedule 40 in here just because I think it make it a little more rigid. And um, are, there, are there any more questions about that that I can't did, answer? Did you try the uh, ladder line J-pole? No. Nope. Didn't have one. I would like to. I'd be happy to string it up. Um, it's a, the mast we usually use is aluminum that may make that a little more difficult because I can't get above it, but we could we could we could try. Is there plans to build it on the internet as well? Links and all other good stuff? Um there's some on QST. I mean obviously Ed wants to kind of sell his antenna, right? What kind of antenna is it? I mean is it a vertical or yeah. Oh it's a ver yeah it's a vertically VHF VHF UHF dual band base station antenna. It's well. not like a monopole or anything like that. No. What's the, what's the max wattage on that? 775. Yeah, they have another one. They have a 200 yeah. or 250, I think. Yeah, they have, they have one that's a little bigger, too. 
I assume they just use larger components. I, um, I've never been fortunate enough to have a problem like that. You fry your brain if you get much above 50, so <laughs> it, it doesn't, doesn't make really? sense. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, everybody fine. Fine. Yeah, Russ, in the yeah. fire service is sure that, that um, oh, you need more watts, and it's like, no, what we have is a lame quarter wave antenna on top of the fire truck that is the problem. Um, it's all about, as we all know, it's all about antenna. Uh, antenna and altitude, those are the two things for VHF and UHF that make the difference. If you um, want to get into 220, they sell a 221 of those, and it's like under 20 bucks. And yeah, that's a good I point. I have one, and it works great. That's that's an excellent point. That uh, you know, 220 still exists. Hey, yeah. it's Dave and I's hammer count. <laughs> we occasionally thank Chuck for keeping it up for us. Uh, that one's still. Oh yeah, that works great. We can. We talked on it today. Well, this is, you know, this is kind of like that. Uh, Oh, that ladder line. Not quite, though. But yeah, you know, it's got some similar aspects of yeah. it. Like, but it's not really the same. Mm -hmm. no, this is something The else. ladder line ones for the 450 ohm stuff. They do have, he does months. have one of those that's a roll up, too. Thank you. Um, I was going to try to bring one, but I don't have one, and Jerry can't find this. How do you keep it from falling down inside the. It stays, you feed it in there, and it magically stays there. Yeah, I had the same thought. I'm like, well, yeah, but. That's not how it's supposed to be. What I do is I feed it in there, I measure it out, I cut it, I feed it in there, and then I pull it with my finger as far as I can get it, and then I cut the pipe again, because I don't want, you know, I don't need an extra six inches of plastic out the end. Not enough room inside for it to curl on it. So yeah, so it's just really standing. It, it does work. Semi rigid. Just enough. Um, but since I knew that that would take about 15 minutes, um, I thought about. Um, sort of a poor guy's tower. I was hoping Jonah was going to be here because I talked to him about these. These are uh, Brad uh, Melbourne turned me on to these. These are military fiberglass tent poles. And um, they're handy as heck because they're very cheap. And by very cheap, I mean, um, as I remember, we got them for $1.25 a piece. And KJ4 and I drove down to Cadillac to pick them up. And by home, I mean like 250 and uh, they were about 25 a piece. And um, you can go up like 10 without too much uh, of an issue. So for like 15 bucks, you got 30 feet of tower. b and um, Tom and I put like eight of those on top of the park toys for the charity festival. And I have heard stories of like Dick doing crazy things with these. Yeah, he actually built a a beam. Yeah. And what was it? It was an 80 meter beam out of out of it. And those were the cross sections, and and he ran the wire inside for the reflector and the resonator, and uh, had it tied together somehow so the pieces were the right length, and then he just strung it up in the tree. Who did that? So if you um, if you don't have a real tower uh, and you got a spot for one of these, yes, uh, come see me and I'll try it out. Because uh, Dave has some yeah. he's not using, and I have some that I'm not using, and nobody really wants to get rid of them. But if you're going to put an antenna on there, we'll have trouble saying no. So um, if this would help you, out. now um, what do you do once you get these? Of course, you know the standard is you throw it on a piece of plywood and you use a piece of hose clamping or strap and you put it on the eave of your house and hope your wife doesn't notice how it was always there. Maybe it'll work. It works with guns. Oh no, I've had that for years. Shut up! <laughs> um, Just load it up with BB guns first. Sure, whatever. Get her done. Um, but there's a couple other ways. And again, this is um, this is Brad's creation. Um, in fact, this um, if Chuck can't put his dock in, I don't know anything about it. Because Brad gave me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't in last summer. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Um, anyway, this job is, you know, exactly what it is. You go out, um, you know, probably not in an asphalt parking lot, but in case of emergency, you ram this in and you twist this guy in, and you get it down to the ground level, and you pop this on there, which is just a piece of conduit from Mick Nerds, and you get the idea. You can go up a ways. And you're up quick like a bunny, and it didn't cost you very much. Pull that up. 
he's gonna send it to Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> hey Chuck, look what we found. Yeah. Winner. Yeah. You, you do know this is being recorded for the <laughs> <laughs> What's the auger from? Um probably Chuck's docks. Um what? I'm not entirely sure, but that's what it looks like. Another alternative, these are about 29 bucks. And this is really, really, really light. It's a speaker stand. And check this out. This you could do in, say, the Salvation Army parking lot. I think we have. Yes, we have. Where do you get those from for 29 bucks? I'm looking for Harbor Freight. I'll get you one. I've got an extra one. Harbor Freight sells it? I thought that's where Harbor Grab had got some. some. I find one that's, that's not aluminum for like under 100 bucks and I'm just pull my hair off, so that's awesome. So I have one in my garage, brand new in a box, and I have it for 30 bucks. That's what I think. I got a couple more things. 30 bucks to it. I beat on them a little bit, and I got the price down because I bought a couple. Or speaker. But that, it's amazing how much, especially if you throw a couple guy lines on there, you know, you put like this piece on the top with a couple eye hooks in it and some guy lines, and for temporary use, holy crap, you can put up with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff. I don't think I'd leave it out there for a winter, but you know, again, for e-com and, and so light and so cheap. Now, if you're lucky enough to win the lottery, or have a friend in the service that can get you stuff that they won't miss. These are the top of the line aluminum post. They they don't bend much. Okay, that's a nice option. These cost about three bucks a piece. They're no longer as good a deal. It's not dirt cheap, but they're pretty doggone nice and they work the same. Um, and uh, again, if you want to make a little bit better investment. Um, I have a deal that I made for my Jeep that plugs into the receiver hitch and it's all aluminum, and I can run 10 of these vertically up. Wow. And then it's a portable repeater in the truck already, awesome. and I have two antennas. I have one for public service, and then I have one for ham with coax right there. How long is each section? They're like three, three or four feet. Three or four feet? Yeah. There's a place called Blue Sky Mass, I know. I used to work at Merrill, and we had a tower that was similar to that, but it was all aluminum. Mm -hmm. And these sections that went at the top, you could put these aluminum booms on and they would like, space out an additional five feet, and you could put all sorts of antennas or cameras or whatever down to it. Uh, they sell like these clamps that go on the top of poles for stuff like that. I'm not sure how much they are, but just kind of made so I'll, I'll send these around, um, you know, if there's any, this is pretty much what I had to talk about, so. Where do you buy the aluminum ones? Um, the Army Surplus place, like Jay's will have these. I don't know if the place in town, but probably both. You can look on eBay. I seem to remember you can get a set of 10 of those for like 50 bucks or something. Yeah. The last two years, two years ago, we got them on eBay for 70-something. All right, maybe in a bag. Pick them more bags. Yeah. That's where I got love. Is Dayton. They're handy, you know, and you can not. But that's basically the presentation, so, you know, we can talk about it a little bit or what have you. Again, I'm just trying to, for emergencies or getting started, the other nice thing is if you're getting started, you slap one of these up, and then you find yourself a nice tower to put up later for your antenna launcher. The aluminum one. Yeah. Try to shoot it. Yeah, we can blow holes. holes I guess we could do that presentation, <laughs> but we need to have that outside. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. That is wild. I think they have to come to field day to play way. with that. Yeah. I have a pneumatic yeah. cannon yeah, that works. Oh, you can get six of those aluminum holes on eBay for uh, 49 bucks. There we go. So what have you found with grounding and your affordable system? That's what if, you, if you deploy these, say, in a parking lot, or you generally try to find a good ground, or have a ground rod that you take with you, or just let it could be a problem for HF. It happen. Yeah, I figured it was an emergency. So I, I ground, I've never grounded any of this. I've never had it set up. I've set up for field day with this stuff. VHF, UHF wouldn't be a long enough wavelength to, to worry about it. The what? aluminum might get hit by lightning, though, and that would be kind of exciting. For a second. Can you get yeah. feet for those? You think that would have the, like a plate on it and you drive big nails through it and anchor that down? Well, or you could put some zip ties on there and use chunks of rebar or fence stakes or dog kennel 
you know, like for the little, not like my dog, but a, a regular dog, screw them in. Yeah, that would work. And that spreads out a little further too. Or you can get really creative and make like yourself a tea steak and some water bottles yeah. and defecate. Pound the tea steak in, <laughs> crush the, the uh, water bottles and put your mask up against the tea steak. And then duct tape it on. You were standing 10 feet from me when I did it. <laughs> About the time we drank the bottle. Of yeah, yeah, that was that weekend. <laughs> um, you could drive a tea safe or something similar. Again, the premise with this guy was that you were in the Salvation Army parking lot and they wouldn't find it very amusing. Um, but you could put a stake here and strap it. But, you know, the gold standard would be to take something like this. This is just plastic conduit and put it up like so and have three eyelets, three or four eyelets in it, and guy it. Because if you put parachute cable on there, holy smokes, are you talking about an incredible amount of wind before you really have a problem. Um, you'd, have, you'd be more likely to bow in the middle. I've, um, I've been humble with what guy lines will and won't do. Um, but that's kind of what I would do. Field Day's also a good place to always set this up. This, this kind of stuff up to and play with it and because um, there will always be somebody there with a the radio that you know and uh, you know it's nice to have an extra it's really cool yeah yeah you I think it was Marshall music Dave you, I think you were with me we went in there and yeah. I'm pretty sure I busted him down to 29.99 yeah piece. he's it's embarrassing to be with him when he's <laughs> dealing <laughs> I walked in with him but I don't know who he is <laughs> exactly <laughs> Get no, it wasn't that bad, but two for forty-six. It might have been fifty dollars. Well, he shaped. They gave him he grew a beard after he went in there. So <laughs> the only thing about getting them online is you don't know what you're getting, and there are some differences. So it is um, there is a little bit of quality difference on the on the posts. I would go ahead and get those on eBay all the time because they're no spec. But these things you might want at least the ability to go to Marshall Music and see what you're getting for your thirty bucks or fifty bucks. Is worth something versus if you buy it from hochimin.com. Well, yeah, there's that. I know that, that MFJ only ones I've seen on the internet, and um, uh, my buddy Paul makes like a metal, and they're all like 100 bucks or something. Like that. so that's a really good deal. Well, yeah, feel free to, and like I say, I, ha I got two of them just because that's how I got the deal, and, um, and I only need one, so don't be able to go great on the patio. Yeah.